what you're seeing here is the system that I am constructing to create the necessary signals in order for us to do a live demonstration of both the Baird mechanical television and the Kit mechanical television at the Spark Museum. I will show you the, the, the system in more detail later when I power it off. But basically here is the Raspberry Pi processor. Really, this has the CPU and some peripherals that run the Linux operating system. This generates two digital signals, one for the Baird and one for the kit. Those signals are derived from a animated GIF file. So it has to convert each image to it so that they can be used by the analog TV with mechanical televisions, which are very slow scanning. So this outputs digital signals. Those digital signals are sent to this circuit board, which I had to construct. This is a digital to analog converter. So this outputs two low voltage analog signals. Those in turn are sent to this little circuit board here. You can't see it very well, I'll show you these later. These are amplified by a couple of 2N22 transistors. One of the signals goes to this um, 2N3054 transistor, it's a power transistor that drives the LED array, which I plan to use inside the Baird. Now, I'm going to wave this back and forth. Hope maybe you can see it flicker. I don't know if the camera can handle it. Now, the other signal goes to a power amplifier, which is a 6L6G uh, beam power tube. That powers the neon bulb. Now, I don't know if I move this back and forth. I don't know if you can see this flickering or not. It is very, very dim. Hopefully, it's bright enough to see in the mechanical television. I want to point out, the reason... Now, originally, back in 1926, both mechanical television had a neon bulb similar to this. However, we found that the holes in the wheel for the Baird are very, very small. And you have to view it in a very, very dark room if it had its neon bulb. And since the museum cannot be made very dark for safety reasons, we're going to try to use the LED array in lieu of the neon bulb for the Baird. Now, with the kit mechanical television, the holes are bigger. They're about 1 16th of an inch in diameter versus about 1 64th inch in diameter for the bird. I am hoping that the neon bulb is bright enough that I wish to replicate the experience of watching a neon bulb mechanical television as we had to view it back in 1936 around 1934-1936 when these came out. I'm going to now show you a oscillograph of the video signal that I'm using for a test pattern now. It's a very, very simple grayscale or stair-step pattern. Now, these mechanical televisions were very, very low resolution so I am I have chosen to use a 4-bit resolution with a brightness with a video which means there are 16 possible brightnesses this may still be too much I'm particularly worried about the um, neon bulb so I may have to reduce it to maybe four or five brightness levels. If that doesn't work, I'll have to do just two brightness levels on and off. Minding that 
This is only to demonstrate how mechanical television w looks like. We're not going to try for a very high quality, high resolution uh, television program. So I'm going to go back to the unit itself. I'm going to zoom in or get a close up to the unit. Maybe zoom out a little bit so you can see the entire chassis. And what I'm going to do, I first I have to, I have to power the unit off because there are lethal voltages inside. The neon bulb, the amplifier for the neon bulb has approximately 450 volts, and that's a lethal voltage. The LED array, on the other hand, since the solid state has about 15 volts, so that's safe. So I'm going to power this unit off. I'm going to disconnect the oscilloscope. Now I'm going to try to tip the chassis up, like so. So you can see, here is the Raspberry Pi, which is bolted to the chassis. Here is your is the digital to analog converter. I'm going to try to push these aside. You can see part of it. Here is the preamplifier. Here is the power transistor, the 2N3055. And of course, here is the 5U4, which is the, the power rectifier for the high voltage. And that's your 6L6G amplifier to power the um, neon bulb. Now the chassis was constructed using some scrap metal that the museum allowed me to use. I cut it up in several pieces and using a plasma cutter. Then I welded it together. I did it this way for three reasons. First of all, I wanted practice construction using a plasma cutter and welding. Secondly, I want this to be an artistic piece, so this has got a little piece of myself in it. And thirdly, I was too cheap to go to Bud and buy a pre-assembled chassis. Now, of course, all the holes and all the openings, I had to use green leaf chassis punches or a plasma cutter to create them. Now, I'm going to try to have you take a peek underneath. This is the wiring job. It may look a little bit messy. I can assure you, this is no more messy than many, many commercially made radios from the era of the golden age of radio. Now, hopefully, when this is done, we can have the Raspberry Pi running all the time. But we don't want to have the high power amplifier running all the time, and we especially don't want to have the motors with the two mechanical televisions running all the time. So I'm hoping to be able to have an electronic relay similar to this installed in here, powered by a logic signal from here. So a patron can press a button. This relay would close and your high voltage and the motors would come on for a period of maybe three minutes or so so they can witness the operation of the mechanical television. Then if nobody else presses the button, the high voltage and the motors would turn off automatically and the low voltage where the processor would stay running all the time. Now that the mechanics are done, my next stage is to write the software and hopefully that will run. I'll cross my fingers right now. Next time I'll see you, the whole system will be running.